I downloaded the official VC64 series user manual, sent it to my Kindle scribe, scoured it completely, and found 10 really cool non-hacky tips that you may not know about. Before I begin, remember all the links you need are in the video description below and I also have created a detailed companion blog post that will have all of these tips outlined and provide additional information. Number one, use different controllers. Page seven. You are not constrained to the joystick that comes with the C64. While the Maxi joystick is better than the Mini thanks to a micro switch upgrade, the form factor may not be everyone's cup of tea. A quick caveat, not all controllers work. Results have been mixed with two modern controllers such as the wired Logitech F310, which doesn't work, for me anyway, and a wireless Logitech G F710, which does work. Gamepad controllers seem to work, including one of my favorites, also from retro games, the Gamepad. If a Nintendo Sega-style controller makes you happy and is USB compatible, it might work. Plug it in and give it a try. Number two, use keyboard and menus in carousel mode, page 16. I love keyboard shortcuts and was thrilled to learn that we can control the C64 using the keyboard. Here are a few examples. The O key will go left, the P key will go right, N will go down, and M will go up. Use L space or return to select options. Shift plus back arrow, not the left cursor, or a quick press of the power button toggles the option menu at the bottom of the screen when a program is running. There are many more keyboard shortcuts, so check out page 16. Number three, boot to classic mode, page 35. If you have a VC64 and haven't booted into C64 or VIC-20 classic mode, you are missing the complete experience. You can boot into classic mode by following these steps while in carousel mode and using the joystick. Choose the device settings icon or the wrench in the dock. Select the computer model option and choose either the C64 or VIC-20 in NTSC or PAL mode. Press the options button on the joystick to return to the previous menu. Select the boot mode option. Select classic mode. Press that option button again on the joystick to return to the previous menu. Hold the power button to reset the C64. The C64 will skip the carousel mode and boot directly to your chosen computer, giving you a more authentic 1980s feel. Number four, learn basic, page 34. What's so exciting about classic mode? Well, it's the beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code or basic. On the Commodore 64, the computer would boot up to the blue screen or aqua and white for the VIC-20 with a flashing cursor. BASIC was the feature to unlock the secrets to our Commodore computers. And if you want to continue that authentic experience, head over to archive.org and download the original Commodore 64 or VIC-20 user's guide and work through them chapter by chapter, much like I did with my Commodore Plus 4 user's manual series. You can check that out in the video description below. Here's another little tip for you. When you download that PDF, send it to your Kindle, your Kindle scribe, or another ebook reader. And if that ebook reader does have a pen, you can mark it all up and you don't have to worry about defacing your precious original Commodore manuals if you still have them. Number five, save computer states, page 36. You can save not one, but four states for each program you load and run. Why would you want to do this, you may ask? There are a couple of reasons. You can save and restore a game at specific levels. Save and restore a game before a difficult level. That way, if you mess up, you can come right back and you don't have to restart the game all the way from the beginning. You can also save an application with a data file, such as a word processor, to speed loading the next time you want to edit that data. The save state menu even provides a time code displaying the length of time the computer was operational before saving the state. Number six, use .tap and .crt files, page 51. When you switch to classic mode, it reveals options to use not only disk images, but cassette or .tap and cartridge or .crt images. The option to use both file types increases the library of titles that you can use on your DC64. And here's another little bonus tip for you. Cartridge files.crt files are not just great for games, 
For instance, you can download the super snapshot.crt file, load it, and then reset the computer. And then super snapshot is available. But retro combs, the original super snapshot cartridge required me to press a button on the cartridge to activate it. Hold that thought. Number seven, use file flags and .cjm files, page 58. There's a whole lot to this one, and it could be the topic of a video in itself. But in a nutshell, flags and .cjm files provide an option to tell the C64 how to configure the program to run. File flags are at the end of the file names and configure a single file whereas a .cjm file is used within a directory to use the same settings for a group of files. So what are some things you can do with file flags or these .cjm files? You can set the computer to PAL or NTSC. You can choose the type of computer, whether it's a C64 or VIC-20. You can add memory expansion, which would have been very costly back in the day. You can set the primary joystick port. You can configure a mouse type. Yes, a mouse can be used on DC64. What if a game doesn't have joystick support? Number eight, use a joystick for games that don't support one. Page 68. Expanding on our previous section and the use of .cjm files, there are C64 games and VIC-20 games that don't support joystick controls. And while they are far and few between, you can use a .cjm file to add this support. The syntax for this file is not intuitive, and I've placed an example in the companion blog post for a VIC game in PAL mode with 35K expansion and copies keyboard controls to the joystick. And there's a whole lot more to explore using this feature, so be sure to check out page 69 in the C64 user's guide to see a full list of key IDs that the .cjm file can use. Number nine, share virtual disks with original hardware or vice, page 73. Back there in tip number four, I demonstrated how to create a basic program, but I didn't show you how to save it. You can save programs and you do this using a virtual disk image. The C64 doesn't come with a big honking 1541 disk drive. When you plug in a USB drive into a VC64, it automatically creates a virtual disk. And that disk is immediately available for you to save programs when you are in classic mode. And it's a pretty simple command. You simply use the command save, open quotations, a file name up to 16 characters, close quotations, comma eight. Once that file is saved to that virtual image on that USB drive, eject the USB drive, move it over to your computer, load Vice, and then attach that disk image to the virtual Commodore emulator. To use this disk on real hardware, you're gonna need a device such as a Pi 1541. Number 10, understanding reset modes, page 102. Similar to the real Commodore C64, there are both hard and soft reset options. To perform a hard reset, hold the left shift key plus the C64 key plus power. Doing this simulates cycling the computer power on and off. All of the data will be reset. Now soft reset when you hold the left shift plus power does not simulate a power cycle and will maintain the current memory contents, but reset the computer back to the beginning. Oh, and hey, remember that super snapshot scenario about pressing that button on the cartridge? The C64 has you covered with a tap of the right shift plus power to activate the cartridge. So those are the 10 tips I found, but as you know, I rarely leave you with just 10, and we've had a lot of little mini tips along the way, but I have two bonus tips for you. Bonus number one, sort games. Now this one works for carousel mode, but if you press the A button or press A on the keyboard, there's another keyboard shortcut for you. You can sort the carousel titles by title, author, composer, genre, year, and my personal favorite, model of computer. Year is also a great option if you want to experience the advancement of games over time. Bonus number two, the C64 Mini Virtual Keyboard. As you know, the C64 Mini has a keyboard it's tiny and it doesn't work. So many of the keyboard tips I share will not work, of course, on the Mini. However, the Mini does have a virtual keyboard and this virtual keyboard is found on the Maxi models, but it's really not helpful on those devices. 
To activate the virtual keyboard, press the options button in a game and select the virtual keyboard option. An on-screen keyboard will appear on the right side. And now through the C64 joystick, the virtual keyboard gives you access to all the keys of an original C64. But remember, you can only press one at a time. A shift followed by another key is not possible with the virtual keyboard. I hope you learned a tip or two about your EC64 watching this video, and hopefully that brought more value to your device. There are many more tips in that user's manual, and you should scour through it yourself. If I have missed something, though, or a tip that you think I should have shared, please put that in the comments below. I'd love to get your feedback. Don't forget, you can subscribe to the channel as you should. You should like, you should comment. Hey, you can send me a thanks if you did learn something and you did get value out of this video. And also, don't forget, you can become a member by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash retrocombs. The community is growing. We're having a great time in the Discord. And the only way you can access the Discord is if you become a member. So that concludes my video for today. Retrocombs out. Hey, check out these other videos. I've got one over here. And then I've got another one over here I think you'll enjoy.